So just a quick intro to these LB diverter motors. As engineers, what do we really need to know? Well really, does that central pin extend and withdraw? That's really it. Um, and we can easily just take this off the diverter valve, have a look at the pin, put a hot water or heating demand on and see whether the pin moves. That's as much as we really need to know. If it doesn't do that, is there power going to it? If there is, the motor's knackered, change it. However, some of us, and I'm one of them, I like to know what's inside. I like to take things to pieces. So what's to follow? We'll be looking at this in detail and uh, maybe you'll find it interesting too. Personally, I find that sort of thing helpful. Let's see if you do. So here's the motor. As we know, central brass pin extends and retracts in response to hot water or heating demand. We've got three electrical tabs. The two outside ones are live supplies, the uh, centre one is a neutral. So if you're going to do a resistance test on this, or depending um, on what state the motor's in, you might need to test on the two right ones or the two left ones to get a reading. So what we're going to do is just now connect up uh, a live supply and a neutral supply just so we can see this working. So the pin's uh, in at the moment. You can't see the pin. The brass pin in the middle is down there. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll make uh, this side, right hand side live and uh, you should be able to hear the motor work. And see the pin extend. Uh, likewise if I now turn it on to send to hot water which is the left side live the motor's turning and the pin uh, has actually dropped but because of uh, it's not on a spring as it would be with a diverter valve we just need to encourage it down out of the way and now it's withdrawn. So what we'll do next is we'll um, take the cover off and have a look inside. So you can see the inside now. The centre pin is part of a cam. You can see the cam there, which corresponds to the opposite cams on the base cog. So uh, this is being held in place by the top part. And as the lower cog turns, obviously it raises this up and down again. Um, well, what's quite clever with this is you can see this setup here is the way that a motor actually stores itself or turns itself off halfway through the complete cycle so that we get the pin extended and the pin withdrawn. So I'm going to turn the power on now um, to, uh, to this side and you can see that this pin here, uh, this is connected whereas this side is disconnected. So we're going to get power on this side through here back to the neutral to the motor and we'll see it half a rotation you'll see how it switches itself off there we are so uh, the green part here goes into a small uh, hole and if we continue with that and do it again now we've got the blue side contact closed so if we turn power on to the left hand side we'll see it turn and turn itself off and at the same time it's now put power back to or well, certainly the contact is closed this side so it's like a bit of a rocker situation where the motor turns itself on and off when it's fully extended and fully retracted which is quite clever so what we'll do now is just take this to bits and have a look. So top cam of the pin, the lower cog, which also has the, the cam on it, cog underneath. Then we can take out this assembly here completely. That comes to one side. And importantly, we have these springs these springs are important because these springs at their other end are connected to the two electrical tabs on the motor. So if this pulls out easily, as it does, you should be able to see the motor, uh, the two 
electrical tabs on the motor and the springs that connect the motor to this device here and so those springs contact the neutral there and the positive there so let's put it back together so here we are back together so we can put the uh, the top back on Give it a click it in place and I'll just connect power onto this side neutral in the middle live this side and we should find the power if we bring power to this side motor comes on and the pin and you hear that click you can now you see obviously what that have seen what that click is and now if we power up the other side motor turns and we should hear another click there where it stores itself and the pins disappeared I think that's about it for this motor as I said before at the intro you don't need to know all of that but I find it interesting and useful just to have a look and understand what all those sounds mean and I think it does help it help with regard to fault finding so uh, that's it for this LB motor uh, we'll see what comes next take care